What is going on guys, DBG here. In this video, we are going to be doing our tier list, but this video is going to be the tier list for the power forward position. Again, we are only gonna be looking at the really elite power forwards and the top rated ones. So there's gonna be a lot of really good cards that are on some of the lower tiers. And before we get onto the tier list, if you guys are new to the channel, subscribe. We are trying to hit 100,000 subscribers by the middle of July. And it's actually looking like if we can keep up the way we've been the last few days, looking like we're going to hit it, which would be crazy. We upload two to three my team videos every single day and pretty much have the entire game covered on this channel. But anyway, now let's get on to the list. Okay, so in this first pile here, we have got the top 15 rated and the next pile is just 10 players that I think deserve to be somewhere on this list, whether it be really high or really low. But anyway, now let's get onto it. And also these are elite tier power forwards, so they're being compared to the elite tier players. So again, there are going to be players in the C and D tier that you may use in your God squads. But anyway, we're going to start off with Blake Griffin, and I like this card, being speed boost, I don't know, there's no, like, I'm trying to justify why he shouldn't be S tier, but no, there's no question about it, Blake Griffin, S tier. Blake Griffin in speed boost, he is an unbelievable dunker, he can also run the ball quite well, he can play at the point guard, he can play all five positions, 6'10", he can shoot, there's nothing he can't do. Dirk Nowitzki, a long release, sure he's got Hall of Fame Limitless, but he's just that bit slow. He's just that little bit slow, doesn't play the best defense in the world. A decent enough stretch five, but can be burned, like absolute. All you need to do is just play someone like a DeMarcus Cousins or a Thon Maker at center, and Dirk Nowitzki's rendered useless, or any stretch four and Dirk Nowitzki's rendered useless, because he can't guard anybody. Unless it's like an out and out big, he's not gonna do much. Let's put Dirk in B tier. And Chris Webber, when he came out, was one of the best power forwards in the game. A decent shooter, and dunk relatively well, decent in the post. But again, you gotta have a little bit more to be in one of the top two tiers. Not a bad card, and also not particularly tall, which is why he is going into the B tier. Like 6'9 is not particularly tall for power forward. It's not too small to be effective, but yeah, it's, it's B tier. Kuzma is A tier. I know you guys might be kind of shocked about why that is, but Kyle Kuzma is, he's 6'9", so he's the same height as Weber. He's got an insane post game. He can also speed boost, has one of the best open jump shot releases in the game. Like it's one of the easiest ones to green. And this Kyle Kuzma, uh, the 96 overall one, 97 overall one, has got more Hall of Fame badges. He's also a much better rebounder. This Kyle Kuzma was my starting power forward for a long, long time when he first came out. And he was the guy, first guy to replace the Pink Diamond Blake Griffin in my squad. Pink Diamond Blake Griffin would probably be hovering between A and B. Now we're on to Kevin Garnett. And this isn't one offensively, he's a B. Defensively, best defensive card I've played against in the game this year. So I'm going to put him in A. And a big reason for that is like, he is my kryptonite in gameplays. If I come up against Kevin Garnett, I know it's going to be a horrible, horrible gameplay because I know he's just going to lock down whatever player I'm trying to score with if there's a chance of that happening. Like, as in, if uh, KG is guarding him at small forward to center or power forward to center position, he will just lock him down. Like, I keep KG at the end of my bench no matter what and just use him as a lockdown defender because he's just, he's got the kind of really long wingspan, the skinny build, which makes him a better defender. And he's just really good at that. Like his Galaxy Opal. Actually, no, I can't see his Galaxy Opal being much better because his offense leaves a lot to be desired. He's got a long enough release. He's not the best offensive player. Unless his Galaxy Opal can speed boost, then I can't see his Galaxy Opal being anything spectacular. Now we are on to Tim Duncan. Tim Duncan, B tier maybe, maybe lower because he can't really shoot the ball too well, but he can shoot moderately well defensively a lot of people like him defensively i just think he he struggles big time for me defensively a yeah, decent shot blocker decent over rebounder just does everything okay he was really good at the start of the year but right now he's outclassed bob pettit is the only limitless range shooter with base 11. he goes into b tier he can speed boost he can defend he can go to the basket he can like bob pettit from 1950s windmill dunking shooting from limitless range and has base 11 like it does not make sense but hey nothing in 2k this year really makes much sense so bob pettit without doubt is in s tier antoine jameson on his good days he's in s tier on his bad days he's in d tier i'm gonna put him in a tier he's got base 11 uh he's got 
which is obviously one of the most cheese releases in the game. I'm not gonna say the best release in the game because if you've got bad internet, base 11 is, bo is borderline useless. A lot of people can mistime it, including myself, but Antoine Jameson is the least consistent base 11 shooter since uh, Kiki Van Doy. So when Antoine Jameson's playing well, he doesn't miss and with his dunk animations, with everything, you can legitimately argue that he is up there with the likes of Bob Pettit as the best power forward in the game. However, Antoine Jameson, I'm going to have to put him in A tier just because he's just that little bit inconsistent. Carl Malone, S tier. No question about that. Carl Malone has got some great stats. He's also got a super fast release, really similar release to Porzingis. He can play defense, he can just do everything. So there's no point in arguing anywhere other than S tier for Carl Malone. Some t I don't use him too much and I may not be the biggest fan of him, but he's like, you just can't argue he's anywhere else, to be honest. Lamarcus Aldridge, the 94 overall would be in C tier. The 96 over, or 97 overall is in D tier. This guy has got a 70 open shot three. Decent shot blocker, I guess. Good post fadeaway. Decent shot mid, but he's slow. Doesn't really defend anywhere too well and also can't really shoot the three ball. Amari Stanamar, a really good card. Like, good dunker, good three point shooter. And uh, I'm only putting him in B tier because I have Chris Webber there. I was, I don't know, like, no, B tier. Amari Stadamar is a good player. There's no, I'm just trying to justify putting someone in C tier. And no, Amari Stadamar doesn't deserve to be in C tier. He deserves to be in B. Really good carry, good dunker, good shooter. Maurice Lucas was good enough to start of the year. Right now, he is in D tier. This card is not very good. Um, Sean Kemp. If he didn't have high speed with ball, he would be in D tier. Because Sean Kemp can't really shoot the ball. His dunking is all right, but it does leave a bit to be desired. Sean Kemp is firmly in C tier. Got high enough speed with ball, can't really shoot the ball. Post game leaves a bit to be desired. 6'10", so he's not too tall, not too small, and just struggles big time for me. Next we got Larry Johnson. Larry Johnson, decent shooter, but only 6'7". Can do kind of everything, except again, he's 6'7", which is a big, big uh, red flag for a power forward. He isn't going to rebound anywhere near as well as the stats would suggest, so C tier. Anthony Davis, for so long, was the best power forward you could buy in the game. Has been outclassed in the last couple of weeks, but only in the last couple of weeks. A tier, without doubt. Versatile, can shoot the ball, great defender, great on offense, nothing he can't do. Now we are on to the next 10. So Billy Cunningham, if you're playing him as like a three, he's kind of probably a B tier, but at the power forward position, because he's 6'6", he's D tier, so I'm going to put him in C tier. He's 6'6", six, six. however, unlike Larry Johnson, I know he's B tier, he's way better than Larry Johnson. He's just, basically, he's Larry, if Larry Johnson gets B boost, it would be Billy Cunningham. Unbelievable stats, base 11, sorry, base 8, left-handed, can shoot the ball, really good. Porzingis, S tier. The best catch and shoot player in the game, in my opinion. When he's open, he doesn't miss. He's also 7-3 and can block shots. The best pick and pop player in the game, without doubt, and Porzingis definitely belongs there. Bob Love, and this is a crazy one. He's got J.R. Smith's release, one of the best defensive cards in the game. I'm putting Bob Love in A tier. I'm sorry, I'm putting him in A tier. Like, I've been using him more and more recently, and he has just been dominating. Bob Love, to me, is one of the best, is one of the elite power forwards in this game. I know he leaves a little bit to be desired height-wise, but he's just that good. Like, he can do everything. Now we're on to Tom Gugliata, B tier. Base 11 saves him from being lower, but all as well as base 11, he's also an incredible dunker, which a lot of people don't really take into account that Tom Gugliata, a lot of times people expect him to be just a pick and pop shooter. They pressure the jump shot too much. He's got a quick first step in game, and he's also going to dunk on everybody. Some unbelievable animations. So definitely belongs at B tier. If I could argue A tier, but I'm not going to put him that high. I don't think he's as good as any of these. Next, we have got Andre Karolenko, S tier. Can play one through four, can guard one through four. Still one of the most frustrating players to come up against. Has probably, after Granger, I think the next best base 11 release in the game. And still, like a lot of people have kind of forgot about him because of the likes of Bob Pettit and stuff, but no, Karolenko is still absolutely elite. Serge Ibaka, good shot blocker, good three point shooter, decent dunker, speed with ball and stuff leaves it a bit to be desired. Post game leaves it a bit to be desired. Uh, C tier, not bad. But yeah, I'm gonna put him in C tier. Thurl Bailey, A tier. 
Like I know he's a ruby, but again, like in things that matters, he can block shots. He's six foot eleven, so he's really tough. Power forward, he can shoot the three, he can shoot the mid. He's also got eighty-eight lateral quickness. Pascal Siakam, long release, decent enough defender. Three point shooting is his main asset, but again, his release is a little bit long. C tier, not a bad card at all, but leaves a bit to be desired. Christian Leitner, B tier, six eleven, so he's got some decent height. Shoots the ball probably better than I would expect. And yeah, just a really nice card in my opinion. Maybe it's just that I really like Leitner, but I was using him as my backup center for a long time. Uh, EG and Leon, C tier, 6 11, or 7 foot. Is he 7 foot? Yeah, he's 7 foot. I was just thinking, what are you 7 foot or 7 foot 1? Actually, no. Uh, between, between. So I'm going to put E between these two. Because. Basically, yes, he's a great pick and pop jump shooter, but there's a lot of great pick and pop jump shooters. But that's really the main thing about E. He's got 94 block, which is good. He's got actually decent speed of ball for power forward. However, the big negative with this card is he literally cannot shoot a post fade. He's got the really long animation that you can't get it off, so he can't shoot a post fade. So for that reason, in terms of elite power forwards, he's there near the bottom. So anyway, that's the video. As always, these lists are just my opinion. So if you guys disagree with them, it's fine. It's literally just my opinion. So leave in the comments if you guys have any differences of opinion or if there's any players you think I should have had on the list that I completely left out. Because just like in the small forward video where I left out literally Paul George who was on the thumbnail, I'm bound to leave out someone to be completely honest. But anyway, yep, that is the video. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe.